Hello and welcome to the Access Festival. My name is Alex Chisholm and I'm one of the members of the team that's putting this festival on. Access is an arts festival focused on issues of access for people with visible and invisible disabilities, as well as equity for black, indigenous, and people of color. What is access? Access is about resources, justice, information, funding, opportunity, and more. We're presenting three programs here. Each program has its own theme. Program number one is what disability? Program number two is um, environmental barriers to access. And program number three is equity for black, indigenous, and people of color. The Gathering Place Association, in partnership with the Gathering Place Community Center with support from Kickstart Disability Arts, Spark BC and the City of Vancouver are proud to present the Access Festival. And so I'd like to welcome the host of today's program. Hello and welcome to the first of our three online Access Festival presentations. I I'm Stephen Litton and your host for today's program. Today's theme is what disability? This is who I am. What do I mean when I say what disability? Well, when I was young, I didn't see myself as disabled. This is just who I am. But society saw me as disabled and that I needed to be fixed. For, for me, I didn't need to be fixed. I just needed to be accepted for who I am. For others, what disability may mean something else. This is what we hope to explore in today's program. I thank you very much for listening to me. So without further ado, I would like to take this opportunity to invite and welcome my friend C.S. Weiss to do the opening remarks. Thank you very much. Hath squail ech tenoyup, toits tenat quien quen shaman, cease quien sna, on one oxen squalowin. Lifts my heart to be here. I want to welcome you all to the shared lands and waters of the Tislewatu, the Huamathguim, and the Skomish Olchamea. I am Skomish, I Stalo, I Hawaiian, I Swiss, and it warms my heart to welcome you all in this good way and to kick off some good work with other beautiful people. I'm going to share the Tum Tum Slolum. And the Tum Tum Slolum I picked because it's the winter. Tum Tum means winter or snow. It also means the snowbird. So yeah, this is the snowbird song. <clears throat> and it comes from the wife of Chief Billy, who originally came from the Stadlium people a couple hundred years ago. And it, what I learned from this song is that songs, just like people, travel, we migrate. And uh, with um, my daughter being a, married into the Stadlium people, We've been telling them about the song and they didn't remember it, so it's been like a gift for them to learn that this is a song that traveled away and has returned. Yeah. Thank uh -huh. 
Osiem, Anhat Squile, and have a very good day and have a very good festival. Hoichuch, Wechak Yol, Anhat Squalowins. The freshest swim in the ocean, stars that fill the sky. Baby, I got a solid notion But what's going on with you and I Listen to me, baby Hear every word I say Somebody else might love you, baby They'll never love you this way Let's start a fire We sure got a spark I got this aching desire I won't be right next to you in the dark Listen to me, baby Want to hear every word I say Somebody else might love you, baby They'll never love you this way I'm like making love in the parlor or parked in lover's lane. I like making love in the wee wee hours. Lord, when it's pouring down rain. Listen to me, baby. Hear every word I say. Yeah. 
Yes, somebody else might love you, baby. Oh, they'll never love you this way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. Here's a little tune from the band. They have such a fantastic uh, body of work. But we decided to record this one because there's a line in this song that speaks to me. Out of nine lives, I spent seven. Goes like oh. this. <laughs> yonder there's peace in the valley get back home got to rumble in the alley oh you don't know the shape i'm in anybody see my lady just living alone about to drive me crazy and you don't, don't know the shape I'm in. in. Yes, I'm going down by the water. Ho, oh, ho, I ain't gonna jump in, no, no. I just been looking for my maker. Lord, I've been wondering about where she been. Out of nine lives. I spent seven. I do a boy get to heaven. Oh, you don't know the shape I'm in. Sixty days in the jailhouse for the crime of having no dough. Now here I am, back out on the street for the crime of having nowhere to go. Save your neck or save your brother. Lord, it seems like it's one or the other. Oh. The shape I'm in There's two young boys Might start a ruckus They do believe you've been Trying to shuck us Oh, you don't know The shape I'm in Yes, indeed. Moving right along, here's a little tune uh, from, uh, you go back to where you started from, you know, and uh, one of my original heroes, uh, I just wore these records out, 
at mom and dad's house. Jimmy Reed out of Leland, Mississippi. This is a little tune he wrote. He talks about, he says, you know, I had been out the night before, and I woke up in the morning, I felt so bad. And my wife, Mary Lee, Mama Reed, come down, and she made me a little cup of tea. And I said to her, baby, you know that I love you. Honest, I do. Don't you know that I love you? Honest, I do. I would have never placed no one above you. Please tell me that you love me. Stop driving me mad You the sweet little woman That I ever had Don't you know that I love you Honest I do I would have never place no one above you. Please tell me that you love me. Stop driving me mad. When I woke up this morning. I never feel so bad. Oh, yeah. This little woman that I have had. Don't you know that I love you? Honest, I do. I wouldn't never place no above you Please tell me that you love me Stop driving me mad When I woke up this morning I never felt so bad Take it home Let's get to the point. This is a tune that uh, I grew up, my mother had a, an album by the, the Mills Brothers with their very special guest, uh, Louis Armstrong. And when I was nine or 10 year old kid, man, I just loved this song. It had funny lyrics and I bopped around to it. Uh, written by Irving Berlin, we found out. But uh, check uh, to a number of years later, 
and uh, in just one second of time, uh, the funny, wacky, zany little lyrics of this tune took on a deep and profound meaning for me. This is called My Walking Stick. Without my walking stick I would go insane I can't look my best I feel undressed without my cane I need my walking stick Cause it might rain And baby when it pours I can't be outdoors without my cane Oh, if I ever left my house Without my walking stick That would be something That I could never explain You know the thing that makes me click In lover's lane go for naught if I was ever caught without my cane left my house without my walking stick that would be something I could never explain you know the thing that makes me click in lover's lane it was a fun not if I was ever caught without my cane Oh, but Julia, this is a bubble bubble Do, 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 hey, my boy, hey, my boy, hey, my boy Hey, my boy, zoop up, zoop up, But the this is a bubble But the dead or on, do, do, do And there we have it, baby. Thanks, Jim. That was great. I was born with the, the, this way, and I didn't think of myself as being disabled until the world pointed it out to me and thrust it upon me. Uh, 
your circumstances were thrust upon upon you how does that how does your circumstances drive you well you know it, it like you say it, it's a very different uh, you know one day i was uh, out bopping around and running up and down the floor and doing whatever i wanted to do and the next day i was uh, lying in a hospital bed with a fellow telling me they had to amputate both of my legs and uh, came as quite a shock, but you know, I, uh, in, in, in some ways, uh, you know, I, I have just begun now, this is almost 50 years ago that this happened, I've just begun now to think of myself as disabled, because <laughs> mm. I have, uh, you know, I'm kind of just slowing down as you, you get to a certain age, and you know, some of my strength has gone away, and, and I guess some of my confidence as well, but uh, I've always, uh, I must say, I struggle to stay out of a wheelchair because people treat you differently yes. when you're in a wheelchair. They really do. Tell you a little story about that. I was, I guess we, I was flying, back, going back home to the States, and I was with my daughter. She was about eight years old at the time. And in the airport, I often use a you know wheelchair to get from here to there because of the distances. And we got to the, uh, the, the the security check, and the fella came over and said to my daughter, who my eight-year-old daughter was saying, he says, "Can he walk?" <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to talk to me. And I said, yeah, I can talk, too. And so it just there's, there's a subtle difference the way, you know, you're always looking up at people and they're looking down at you. And so that's something that, you know, I mean, it's just something I've struggled with uh, and uh, mm. carrying on. And I'm, I'm using a chair a lot more now these days just because of uh, the distances and et cetera, et cetera. And it's been a, you know... It's been a, quite a journey, and it, it will remain to be such, and as, as, you, as you well know. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, does, does it affect your music? Well, no, but I, you know, I found that uh, when, when, this, when this first happened to me, is it, music is where I found my, my solace, where I found my peace, where I found uh, the painkiller, you know, like there was a, I, and I still deal with, with phantom pain, uh, but I have found, I mean, from the very beginning that when I get truly involved in playing music, not just humming a tune or whistling a tune, but when I really get involved, the pain goes away. It takes that, hits that endorphin part in my head, and so music has, has, uh, has seen me through the hardest of times and has helped me celebrate the, the most wonderful of times. Yes. Uh, when we think of this, this festival and uh, uh, on Access uh, 2021, what do you think about when you think about access with a disability? Well, you know, we're, we're finding that there's access is so much more than just, uh, you know, uh, handicapped washrooms and stuff. I mean, it's uh, so much of it is, yes, okay, trying to t take away some of the, uh, the obstacles that are in our way as uh, people with disabilities. But also, you know, there are disabilities that you can't see. And there are disabilities, I mean, in terms of... Uh, people's attitudes towards race and race and ethnicity and all sorts of stuff. And I think that as we get into this Access 2021, we just have to, to broaden our scope and, and widen our perception of what, uh, what disability and what access and what uh, true uh, just equanimity means to us all. Thank you, Jim. One, one more thing that I would like to add is that uh, when I look at my disability, I was born with it. I didn't have to adjust to nothing. It's all I knew. But uh, the challenge of adjusting without a disability and uh, uh, getting one later in life, I can understand what people go through in challenging and readjusting and looking at the world different. Well, you find out what's inside of you and you find out who your friends really are. Awesome. Thank you very much, Jim. You bet, uh, it's Stephen. a pleasure Always talking a pleasure with to you see today. You, man. Yeah. Likewise. Uh, we'll be right back with Jim further down the road uh, in a little while. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.
name is Frederick Brown. I started making art several years ago. I made art to help release my feelings. And I love working with color. It's so the different emotions. I sing to my flowers to make them happy and grow. I want people to know regarding of if you have a disability or not that you can do anything you put your mind to. Art is for everyone. Further we rise. The stories of our ancestors are left, lost and fading in time, yet not fully forgotten. We must create new visions, dreams and legends, utilizing our entire indigenous history in truth to enlightenment, empowering our purpose and will where we nurture our authentic selves in our own way, on our own terms, evolving the resiliency. Re reconnecting the courageous, brave, wise, and loving generations whose strengths to face traumatic life experiences honestly becomes their power in transforming their pain to beauty. That will open up the heart, mind, and spirit of many, planting a seed of transformation so that we can continue blossoming as a people. It's now. There is nothing left to lose. We must free ourselves with our people. It's our legacy to give, leaving hope for generations. A child's plea, Stephen Lytton, shed no tears for me. I do not know your pain, the horror, the anger, the sorrow. Within me are like a raging river running over me, a knife piercing my heart. We are in this fight together. Take my hand and walk with me and ride the storm. Must our people be like children lost in a wilderness of addictions and sickness? Have we not yet learned? Have we lost the vision of our ancestors? Dare we dream, examine our hearts, 
nurture and cherish the soul, stroll life's journey as one, for true, true beauty begins in the fight, the will to live. Be like the drum, the heartbeat of a nation, and strong and proud like the tree enduring the storm. Be like the eagle, proud, soaring in the wind. I wrote this one as I was watching and sitting in front of Carnegie Center and observing the community around me. And there was this uh, young woman who was uh, struggling in her addiction and uh, she was also burying a child. So I wrote uh, this poem uh, about her and about her child she was burying. Not that the child would judge her, but uh, give her a hand up and love her as, as she was struggling. And uh, there was, uh, so it was her voice, his vision, her courage, his respect, her dignity, their dream. That was what I uh, was thinking about from his perspective that they were in this fight together. An ocean of humanity, come, embark on a journey with me. Travel into the world of the unknown, perhaps the twilight zone. A world of fantasy, reality, insanity. Capture the hearts, shake the very core of our, our being. Paint your collage, examine your innermost fears, or even an ocean of tears. Color your world. Give us a taste of sanity, pain, or even beauty. Reach into the very depth of our souls. There, silence is, is not golden. Maybe touch the very corner of our lives where dreams are real. Maybe not. Ex escape is the only way. Run, run, run. Eerie, but bittersweet. Behold your beauty. Behold your beauty. Your beauty shines as we walk the path together. In silence we go. You lead me. You walk alongside. You follow my every move. In your presence, I am under your spell. You touch my very soul. You cause me to fear you, but I only want to dance with you. Many a time I am chilled by you. Humanity has experienced you for centuries. Love and war were at your hand. I hate, fear, and love you, but you light up my world. Behold your beauty an awesome wonder. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Stephen Lytton. It's my pleasure to introduce our next guests to perform for you today, Dave Symington and Jim Meyer. So without further ado, I'll send them to you.
Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our program. I'm here with Leif Evans. Hi, Leif. Hey, how are you doing, Yuri? I'm really good, thanks. Hmm. Um, do you want to take a few minutes and just tell us about yourself and the work that you do as an artist? Certainly. Uh, uh, I mean, it, these are things that I've explained over and over again, but I, I, it's always salient because it's, it, it, it echoes a great number of people that are in the art community that I know of. Is uh, I started painting. When I first came down, I was in a horrible place. I was, uh, I was enormously medicated. I was wandering around like a zombie. And somebody directed me to the art room at, at Coast, just down the street. And they had a, and I went in there and I, and even then I started just, uh, but, but, but I've always been a bit of an art wonk, but I hadn't painted since high school. And so I started painting and, uh, and it, they were horrible at first. They were just these big brown things that, uh, you know, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing sort of thing. <laughs> but it didn't matter. The, the value of the painting wasn't important, and it still isn't to this day. It was just every day I would go in and I would paint. I'd usually work in about three or four paintings at once and just paint, 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 paint. And when, when they kicked me out, I would go home and think about it. I'd come back and paint. And I started to realize that the thing that I was missing and, and what the illness had taken away from me was that structure, the structure of work. The, the thing that you get from, uh, from a job and from uh, employment is, is not just the money you receive, but rather the structure that it provides in, in your day and, and the sense of accomplishment. Mm. So, and I've been doing it now for, what, 14 and a half years? Well, this year is, of course, a, a complete wash because... The, the studio is shut down, and I tried painting my house, and 
I, that was that was a rousing failure. But mm. uh, otherwise, I mean, this has been a life-saving enterprise for me. Nothing, no medication, uh, no uh, group therapy, not, nothing has provided a, a sense of well-being and calm like, like the work. And I, I always say, and it's a very corny thing, but I, I think it, 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 it's, uh, it works. Is a, I, I, it's, the, it's the verb, not the noun. It's the painting, not the painting. The, when I'm finished a piece, it, no matter how good it was or how much I liked it, three paintings later, I don't give a shit about it. Like, you could set it on fire, I don't care. So, and, and it's amazing how much satisfaction that provides you. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm not alone in this regard within my community. You'd be surprised how many people within the artist community you know, that are, are, uh, are of the same bent. Thanks, Leif. <laughs> no problem. Um, do you identify as a person who lives with a disability? Um, that's an interesting, uh, uh, I mean, I grew up no, not knowing my problem, and, uh, and I, I would stumble into it. So ha first time it happened was around 15, and I would just completely, uh, I plummeted into a, a, this horrible well of depression. And then it pretty much happened almost every five years. And, and of course, you don't make the connection because it's usually in conjunction with a broken relationship or the loss of a job or any number of things. But, but they were never, you know, they seemed like the trigger, but they really weren't. And it was only in, when in my mid-30s when it, uh, I started to you recognize the pattern that you realize that, um, I mean, I've been stuck on medication before and all that sort of thing, but... But I always said, okay, that's enough of that. I'm, I've, I'm over that. I'm going to sort this out myself. And then you realize that, no, this is part of who you are. And, and, and in conjunction with the art, what happened to me when that happened, when I made that, and part of, uh, part of that deal I made with myself is whenever one of these interviews come up, which I really don't like all that much, I make myself do it because I, it's part of that confession that I require, mm. that I have to make to myself that says, you have a disability, you have this problem, and you have to make peace with it. And that's the thing. So, so I think that's what I've done. I'd like to bring somebody else into this discussion, mm -hmm. uh, Stephen Litton. So let's just hang on there for a moment, and we'll bring him to, in to join us. All right. Welcome back to our program, everybody. I'd like to introduce you to Stephen Litton, who has joined us. Stephen, can you introduce yourself for us? My name is Stephen Litton. I was uh, born with a disability called cerebral palsy. I didn't know I had a disability until it was uh, forced upon me. And uh, here I am today because of the arts. Uh, I, I, it, it's helped develop my character. I started uh, working in the arts in 2004 with Vancouver Moving Theater, and they've uh, uh, Along in life, uh, people have, the people I've met in my past, right from the get-go, have, have helped shape my character, have helped shape the, the, the path that I, that I now roll on. And uh, this is, I'm here today and I'm representing not only my, myself, but my community. And I also have a lot of other interests in the arts, like uh, talking about... Um, Re revitalizing our history in the indigenous community and uh, giving our our people to address the issues of, for example, reconciliation on our on our terms and how do we heal our nation um, going forward. Thank you, Stephen. We're bringing you into a discussion that Leaf and I were having already, and. It's about disability, and as a person, I'll pose the question to both of you, but Stephen, as a person who was born with a visible disability, Leif, a gentleman who's been born with an invisible disability, I'd like to ask you both, who determines that you have a disability? Well, f from, my, from my experience, uh, I did not realize I had a disability at, until it was thrust upon me. Society deemed, uh, uh, um, and deemed me having a disability, and those were the challenges that I faced. It wasn't that I had a disability. It was always having to prove yourself that you didn't have a disability, but a society uh, looked at it different because it was all about um, um, 
not giving the individual an opportunity to speak for themselves or make decisions uh, for their self going forward. Mm. Yourself, Leif? Um, yeah, no, I, I, I commiserate with, with, with Stephen here. I, 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 of course, I experienced uh, quite the opposite. Um, I, I, I struggled to admit to myself, so I, I, I commend Stephen for his, his, his ability to, to, uh, to process it, obviously better than I have. And I think that was a big part of my problem, is that you don't want to uh, acknowledge your failings. Uh, it's, <laughs> and I think it, maybe we can both commiserate on that. I, 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 I've struggled every, like I said, about every half decade with, uh, with a complete collapse and, uh, that, and uh, I'd wind up in hospital for three months and, and, uh, and that in itself is hard to, to uh, extricate yourself from. So uh, my, my um, burden he was admitting it to myself that I had the problem and that I would have to uh, incorporate that into how I thought about how I behaved for the rest of my life. And I guess we both have that in, 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 in common. That, that leads me into the next question well. Um, how does... The term disability is a controversial term because it starts with D-I-S. Um, how does that affect your daily lives as individuals? Oh. I guess I'm asking your opinion about the label from a societal point of view. Well, there's not much you can do about the label. I, I, I think uh, we spend a lot of time trying to run away from uh, labels that just by th the nature of, uh, of us being outliers, we're going to, uh, it's going to uh, uh, engender negative connotations. We are, you cannot, you know, you can change the word as many times as you want, but that connotation is going to follow it regardless. So I say stop running away from the word, embrace the word, um, and uh, I, I try to do that. Now, I don't necessarily enjoy it, and I still, shudder sometimes at the badge, but it's better to just say, yeah, yeah, and, and, and get on with it rather than pretend that it's not there. Mm -hmm. Would you repeat the question, for you, please? I probably won't repeat it the same way, Okay. but um, my question is, is how does the label disability uh, affect your daily life? I know who I am. I know how, how what I've gone through. Uh, it doesn't label me at, uh, at all. I know what I'm living with. I know what I can do. I know my abilities. I know my disabilities from a, from a, from a, um, a community perspective. I know my limitations, but I also know my weaknesses, know my strengths going forward. And what I've proven today and uh, continue to prove is that it's about involvement and involving yourself and having the support around you to give you that, that, that's, to give you that uh, understanding that you do matter. And uh, regardless of your disability, um, it, it really is, it, it's in the mindset. How do you see yourself disabled? I don't see myself disabled because I was born with it. And when you see people who have, uh, their circumstances have changed and they become disabled after the fact, then the adjustment is that much more greater for them and the impact uh, for them to, begin to look at what is disability, how do I address it, do I thrive or dive? Excellent. It's all in the individual's uh, uh, way of thinking and the support they have and, and their journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think when we look at uh, disability, it's in what way are we disabled? Are we, dis we are disabled physically, but mentally, psychologically, we are not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, I just um, 
I'm very honored to have the support and be involved in the arts because it's really thrust my life forward. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask you both an odd question. How has disability enhanced your lives? For myself, I'm in the arts. I've continued to be uh, looked upon uh, as uh, how do we go forward with our nation? How do we address the issues? How do we address the traumas? How do we uh, change the narrative? How do we change the paradigm? We know what we're dealing with in the Aboriginal community. How, for me, um, it, it, I'm doing a project called uh, Further We Rise, and it's about the history of our people and what we've gone through. through. And so I've been approached uh, and asked to be a role model because I've um, survived residential school and I've got a, I've got a great mindset and um, people look to me for leadership and uh, support in, in the initiative going forward. And we, we talk about our traumas, we talk about, um, we talk about needing to, uh, our people have been taught a lot of things out of the, their control, and it's traumatized us, and, it's, and now it's rebuilding a nation. Um, our youth are dying faster than our elders, and that's a shame. So how do we change the paradigm in that going forward so that we can begin to heal, yeah. real heal, heal on healing on our terms is key mm -hmm. for our survival. How about yourself, Leif? Uh, yeah, well, it's a, it's a very good question. Uh, I think uh, it, I, 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 everyone imagines what your life would be like if you, if, you, uh, if you didn't have the thing that caused you so much damage and, and, and uh, disrupted your life so severely. But, you know, it's, it's, of course, it's become a hackneyed phrase. And, and you know, uh, but the thing that doesn't kill you, it does make you stronger. And the thing that you measure yourself up against. I mean, it, it, nobody measures about themselves against that really good party that they went to that had a lot of, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Those aren't the things that have value in your life. The things that have value in your life are the things that you've managed to uh, uh, overcome, the things that you've managed to uh, 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 put behind you and not put behind you in a, in a sense that you're running away from them, but rather you've, you've, uh, you've achieved a, a a detente with them, and and I think that's how you have to look at these sort of things. Is not not as a the things I've achieved. Like I've I've written two books, and I've I've become a, a painter of, of you know limited renown, but some standing, and and uh, those things would not have happened had I not had this illness. The thing that that drove me to do those things was a need to uh, uh, address the issues that it were the problems that it was imposing upon me and and uh, and you know that's the language of the paintings that's the language of the poetry it's uh, those are things that I'm enormously proud of and I don't know whether I achieved those things I mean if, if somebody came and could have hit me with a, a magic wand and say you can have that gone if you'd like for your entire life you know I was at, I was Turgenev. Said, you know, you can take anything away from a man, uh, but you can't take away his suffering, because that is the most important thing about our existence: is how we, how we manage to overcome the things that tear us apart. You know? So yeah, so it's both uh, hated and and disturbingly loved all at the same time. I'd like to share a quick thought. Uh, I have a personal belief that we all live with disabilities. Either of you have anything to say about that? Any thoughts? I think it's a sliding scale. I think everybody, every, everyone's life is a tragedy. Everyone's life is horrible. It, 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 some people put on a better face than others, but everybody's life is a piece of shit. And, and they have some, and they, they struggle against that in whatever, you know, and, and they make peace with the things, or they don't, and they become better or worse because of it. 
Stephen? I believe we all have a disability of some kind. We're, we're disabled with regards to this experience of COVID. We were all, we're all traumatized. We're all disabled to some extent. And uh, we, we continue to either uh, find ways to uh, uh, keep ourselves positive. Uh, and uh, I, I think we're all in this together, as they say. And I think the only way we're going to do this is together. And uh, if you talk about um, when, but when you talk about uh, uh, disability, uh, there's one thing that I would have liked to see every time I have a discussion is have a female voice involved in this discussion because the things that were in the disabled community, I feel that the, the 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 female voice doesn't have a voice. So I think in future, should we do this again, that a female voice should be always involved because there are things that they, they, they deal with that we don't deal with. Yes, we, we can talk about disabilities and give an overview, but we can't give a female's perspective as they should True have enough. one. True enough. Gentlemen, I want to thank you both for your insights in our discussion today. Thank you. Thank you. You know, the blues makes its way all around the world. Uh, this was, uh, uh, for a number of years, I, I had a business partner in, in Bonnie, Scotland, and I would go every year to Edinburgh for the Edinburgh Festival. And one of the times we got, we got a chance to go out and, uh, and play uh, on the Isle of Skye. And here we were in Portree in this little wee pub with all these little wee fellas with their dram of whiskey and smoking cigarettes. And I wondered how the blues was going to go over. So I finished the first set, and it was fairly well received, and this little wee fella walked over to me and said, do you know any Big Bill Brunzi? <laughs> All right, well, I, cert I certainly do. <laughs> Here's a tune from the man himself. morning, feeling blue, cause my baby done left me, what am I gonna do, oh lord I'm lonesome, and the blues are dogging me, but that's alright, I will be up someday, my baby left me, left me broken down, Saying goodbye, St. Louis, Jimmy B. I see you in another town, and Lord, I'm lonesome. And the blues are dogging me. But that's all right. I will be up someday. I got to talk to myself, sleep by myself, because that woman I've been loving. She loving someone else, and Lord, I'm lonesome. And the blues are dogging me. That's all right. I will be up someday. Pick it, Wilson. If I had to listen to what my mother said, done what she said, I'd be home right now. Sleeping in a big feather bed instead I'm lonesome. 
And I got the blues dog in me But that's all right I will be up someday I was up this morning Feeling blue My baby done left me What am I gonna do? Oh Lord, I'm lonesome And the blues are dogging me But that's all right I will be up someday Good Lord, I'm lonesome Thank you. You ever have that thing where you're cooking dinner and you, you go over and you open up the refrigerator and you go, what the hell am I looking for? <laughs> Those little moments that just kind of drift into who knows where. Might even last over a whole evening, a weekend, a month of your, uh, maybe six oh, months life. of your life, your, your whole lifetime kind of in a blur. Anyway, here's a little slice of life from me to you. And since uh, we've been uh, unable to uh, get away on our tropical vacations we're used to, this is uh, personally from me to you. Una carta postal de México. A postcard from Mexico. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. <laughs> Hola, mi perdida señorita. I am sending my regards. It's been so long since I've seen you. Cause when you left, you took the car. You know, I finally left the city. I got hooked up with a band. Now I seek rejuvenation. Somewhere south of the Rio Grande. Estoy aquí sin mi enamorada As I travel near and far The ocean to the mountains I've just been playing my guitar This started out as a vacation I was so sad to see you go But now I'm hooked on relaxation I think I'll stay in Mexico Yes, I remember when you told me You said that I would have to change And that if you ever went away well, My poor life would never be the same And as I sit in this cantina <laughs> I must admit I am ashamed I remember every word you told me I just don't remember your name Fotografía de la desesperación. As I sit and sip tequila and lie here in the sun, I know I could have struggled so much harder to maintain you on your throne. But now from San Miguel Allende, 
It's adios, mi corazón. Oh, I remember when you told me You said that I would have to change That if you ever went away Well, my poor life would never be the same And as I sit in this cantina <laughs> I must admit I am ashamed I remember every word you told me I just don't remember I keep forgetting it's I know it's in there somewhere <laughs> Dear old what's your name And this is uh, St Simon Kendall on the Stomach Steinway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is one that uh, kind of takes me back home. Of course, uh, I've made my home here in the, the Vancouver area for close to 50 years now, but a, a piece of me always is uh, running down the middle of the continent, washing the continent clean. title track from a, a Juno Award winning album I put out a few years ago. This goes. from the highland a mirror for the Cajun moon a road without a memory of anything that started out as blue so you can pour me a lack of jug of wine into the Gulf of Mexico until the end of time but no one ever loved that river the way I love you you move with your own rhythm like tide on the river the lightning on the ponchy train
the way I love you Thank you. I believe we got time for one more. And uh, this is one that uh, always has come to mean quite a lot to us over the last little while. We, we did this, uh, we were asked to perform at the, um, the ceremony when they saying goodbye to the, the Sedin twins uh, and the, uh, the Kanaz asked us to come and uh, particularly ask us to, to play this song and we've been doing it. And it goes like this. God bless and keep you always. May your wishes all come true. May you always do for others and let others do for you. May you build a ladder to the stars and climb on every rung. May you stay. May you stay forever young. to be righteous grow up to be true may you always know the truth and see the light surrounding you may you always be courageous stand upright and be strong and may you stay may you stay forever young May you stay May you stay forever young song always be sung and may you stay may you stay forever young forever young forever young yes may you stay May you 
stay forever young Yes, may you stay May you stay forever young Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Jim and Simon. What a great way to end this program. Uh, it's wonderful music. Um, that brings the conclusion of this show. Um, we have two other programs that we hope you join us with over the next few days. So uh, thank you and good afternoon. Bye.